Hey guys, Dave from the Rookie for Nerds by Nerds, and today I'm hanging out with Staff Raider Doug. And today we're going to be talking about ways to add tension into your combat, and we're going to actually use an example from a game we just played in. Hey guys, jump down to the description below where you can find Nerdarchy, the newsletter game weekly tips, as well as learn how the game went Nerdarchy. So as you can see, we are not at the Nerdarchy set. We are not in the HQ. Hopefully the sound is not too booming and echoey in here. But um, we just got done playing a game of Pathfinder uh, run by Kobold Press in the Kobold Press room. And it was actually run by uh, Stephen Rowe, mm -hmm. which he did a great job. It was a fun game. We had first level characters. I haven't played a first level character since, well, you know, one of the other pre-gen <laughs> games I just played earlier uh, in the week. But no, uh, I haven't played Pathfinder, though, in ages. Uh, and or any of the you know, 3.5 systems. Mm -hmm. so, so that was a little bit interesting. But one thing is for sure, it doesn't actually matter what system you're using. Um, tension in your role-playing games can be generated, you know, and it's just gonna add to the experience. And that's what we, you know, kind of, uh, we kind of just went through, like uh, staff writer Megan was in the game as well, as her fiance, Josh, and her, her younger brother, Max, uh, the two of us. So we had a decent sized table, and after the combat, Megan's like, oh, my adrenaline is still going, mm -hmm. because it was pretty climatic, it was, it was an exciting battle, and even for level one characters. Yeah, it really was, and uh, like you said, the way you kept the tension um, with the, you know, there was environmental effects, and the fact that we just were first level guys, so it's like everything's tense. Yeah, so in this particular combat, there was a dragon coming in, at first level, which means you're, you're kind of boned if that gets there. So we had to resolve the conflict before the dragon got to us. And we also would have, we also were gonna have to figure out how to deal with the dragon. Mm -hmm. You can't fight a dragon at first level. No way. So that was one of the things going on. The other things that was going on was there was a bunch of floating islands basically. And attached to those floating islands were ropes or bridges, right? And you could use either. The bridges were safe, but the, uh, the ropes were not. But you could use the ropes, and if you did, it, it basically gave you tactical advantage because you could move around the, you could move around the battlefield much faster. But there was a third element. What's that? The third element. You were there. You were now. So the, hopefully, like if you guys don't, uh, if you guys play this adventure, you know, spoilers. I don't know the name of the adventure. So, <laughs> but the third element was uh, there was a severed angel's head. Right. That would cry. That would cry tears whenever there was any kind of like hostility or anger mm -hmm. in the area, and it would absorb the negative energy, the pain, and that was dangerous power. But they would feel it, right? Right. So anyone who touched the angel tears would be filled with rage and just attack, you know, whatever was closest to whatever was near them that they wanted to kill. And if it ran out of things they wanted to kill, well, you'd be killing each other. I think he built the tension too well with that because my first goal was like get that thing away from the bad guy so right away i was like I'm a, i I gotta shoot this thing out of its hands yeah i yeah. didn't want it i was just like this is because the enemy had it right the enemy had it and there was a bunch of goblins but not only that the battle the the location right the only thing there's like this magic that works on this location where there's these there was these otherworldly creatures they were frozen in time but their minds were still active mm -hmm. and still working and they basically would make anything near them hostile yeah. full of rage and the only thing keeping that power at bay was the angel's head. Yeah. So that's like a fourth factor, really. Mm -hmm. So, and in addition to that, he, you know, in the game was entered like these pieces of magical tech that could be used. And they had like, they had fun uses where you could use them to shoot at people. Uh, you could charge up for several rounds, make them do more damage. Or you could overcharge them where they would explode like bombs. Yeah. And just, you know, another layer of tension was just the fact that we were first level guys. So, like, on the one hand, I didn't really care that much. It's a one shot and it's pre gen. But it kind of let us add tension to it because we did, I didn't care. It's like, I don't really care if the character dies. So, I'll go out of my way to be like, yeah, it's a tense one. I actually did die. And the character was some kind of undead race of ghoulish humanoids. So, yeah, when yeah. you go down to zero, you're just, that's it. Yeah, and then we had, the, we had like this Kenku like mm -hmm. uh, player character. He died as well. Yeah. You know, he's like uh, this 16 year old kid. It was mm -hmm. his first death. Yeah. You know, but it was, but it was cool. It was fun. Uh, you know, three of us made it out. Mm -hmm. And like, there was like, there was, Several ways to kind of like deal with the dragon. Yeah. And I think like the way we used wasn't exactly the one that 
the um, that the GM was planning. But once he heard Megan say that, he's like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, so the idea was, okay, you have these these pieces of alien tech, and if if you give it to the dragon and set it to charge, it'll blow up, it'll do a bunch of damage, and it's not enough to like really beat the dragon. Mm -hmm. But it's enough. But in the GM's mind, it's enough for it to hurt the dragon and be like, "Yeah, I don't want to do this right now." Right. And for him to fly off and you know figure things out, maybe if he comes back, you're totally boned, right? Oh, of course. But you know what Megan did? She's like, "Hey, we just need to take that head and run away from here because then the, that effect of this place will take hold when we leave, and the dragon will go, you know, go off in a rage mm -hmm. and start killing all the like. There's like a bunch of goblin tribes that lived around there." So, you know, so she just wanted to you know, use it to pit the enemies against the enemies. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, I mean, just for a one shot with one little first level characters, that was super dramatic ending with a lot of tension from all those different layers working together. Right. And there's, there's tons of other ways you could add tension into your game. And I just thought, you know, I don't even feel like we need to go into like a bunch of ways to add tension I, just by illustrating the ones that this GM used, mm -hmm. I think is, you know, is awesome in itself, you know, because like we said, we came up with four ways, you know, incoming dragon. Not a good idea. <laughs> this this half Bargarest, it was the villain, and he was wielding an artifact, right? So we had to get that from him. You know, the mm -hmm. the actual effect of the place that could take take place. You know, the environment, like you said. So there's all these things going on that just totally added to the to the scene and to the to the combat, and, and made, gave us other options. And and you know, it's funny too, like the way the the battle itself ended. Because, like, you, uh, the one character is squaring off against the big bad, right? Mm -hmm. She's got the prize, and uh, she's given it to actually the one person in the player, one, the one person that was playing a character that was actually not affected by the rage because right. he was a construct. So me and him are running away, and I also have this, this gnome that we kind of freed an NPC, mm -hmm. and my kobold was, like, keeping him as a, his henchman. Uh, and... You know, and I turn, my, my kobold turns, he looks, and he sees behind him, like, the Minotaur is squaring off against this thing that killed the, the Kenku-like creature, that killed our undead ally, mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the problems, was the dragon was coming in, and he makes this decision, he's like, all right, well, I'm going to actually st stay and help the Minotaur, and then we can maybe, maybe get away. So he turns around, runs back into the battle, and crits this creature and takes him out, and then we're able to get away. The dragon totally rages, does his thing, and you know we actually, we actually, I don't, I don't want to say save the day or win per se. You saved your skin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of us managed yeah. to, to, you know, to complete the quest, which was basically we were we were captured and to get away. Yeah. We lost a couple friends and allies along the way, but ultimately, for the most part, most of us got out, and it was just a fun adventure. Yeah, and it was a good, you know, exercise in. Just for DMs, too, it's just like letting the players direct the action a little bit, too, and play off the tension that you're creating. You know what I mean? It's like you're, you're put in this situation. It's like, well, the way they react can change the way you envision the encounter, too. So you just go with it and have a fun time. It makes a big difference. He, the GM had a lot of fun, too. Yeah, absolutely. And there were other points where he had some tensions into the combats as well, mm -hmm. where we had to run away because we couldn't act. We couldn't, there was no way we were going to be able to overcome you know, the number of enemies that were there. Yeah. So all around, it was just fun. And, and, you know, whenever you can add that tension into the game when the players are uncertain, they don't know what's going to happen, you know, it's going to heighten the experience for everyone. I feel there's a lot of times, even myself as a DM, will be running, but I don't necessarily get that tension into the game yeah. that, that, we, that we felt today. Yeah. A lot, a lot of it was the environment, just like a lot of those rope bridges and things, gaps, and, and where you had to use our skills to get across or just navigate the environment was really cool. Yeah, like you, like at the very end, if you messed up, you're probably going to plummet to your death. Mm -hmm. There were some other places where it wouldn't, you weren't actually going to die, but it was going to hinder you and give the enemy an advantage. Yeah. So all of that was interesting. It just made combat more interesting. Oh, yeah, totally. So if you're looking for ways to make combat more interesting, sometimes you need to think outside of monsters and just think about how can you add tension to the scene, the scene and make your players, you know, not sure what's going to happen. Right. So what do you guys think? How would you do in your game? What are your techniques? You can uh, let us know in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. And you can go to the website and there's articles about tension and all other kind of deep GM tips and environmental ideas for your game. Until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.